Cloning always seems to come off as some kind of far-off future science fiction concept. At least, that's the way it seems to be portrayed in movies and shows. If you read a lot of popular science articles, it seems more like a technology we have and have had for a long time. But the cool stuff we can do with it is always on the horizon or just out of our reach. At the current advancements in cloning technology, basically every mammal on Earth has the capacity to be cloned. Those mammals that are usually cloned are those in the livestock industry. It's mostly for breeding programs and not for meat. As I've begun to dip my toes into the wild and complex world of genetics and cloning, I've found that there's one thing that geneticists have yet to figure out. Birds have never been cloned. That seems odd. Frogs have been cloned before, flies have been cloned, but a bird has never been cloned? Is it even possible to do? To preface the explanation of bird cloning, scientists announced in 2021 that they had cloned an endangered species of North American mammal, the black-footed ferret. These guys are super rare, with the current population heavily depleted in genetic diversity. There happened to be some forward-thinking biologists back in the 90s that froze some DNA material for these ferrets. The birth of the new clone gives fresh genes to the black-footed ferret population and a spark of hope for the future survival of the species. That begs the question, with the number of endangered birds on the planet, why can't we do the same thing for them? Well, cloning likely isn't possible for birds. To figure out exactly why it is difficult to impossible to clone a living dinosaur, I think it'd be a good idea to run through the process of cloning to begin with. Cloning can occur naturally when single-celled life forms divide themselves or when plants cut off a piece of their bodies and that piece becomes a brand new plant identical to the original. In the lab, cloning can take place in many ways, but the one that matters here, the one used for cloning multicellular mammals, is called somatic cell nuclear transfer. To do this, the geneticist needs to swap out the genetic info of one egg cell and replace that info with the DNA from the nucleus from a donor. The geneticist places the egg cell under a microscope, finds the nucleus, and carefully sucks the damn thing out with an incredibly thin syringe. The egg is now a blank slate, ready for some new biological data. Next, you find a somatic cell, or its nucleus, from another individual. The somatic cell being any cell that isn't a reproductive cell. Suck that thing out and then insert it into the empty blank slate egg, and you're ready for an electrifying time. No, literally, they zap the now data-stuffed egg with a teeny jolt of electricity to stimulate the sucker to think it's been fertilized. Stimulate your senses. If that's successful, it does the same thing that cells do. Divide and divide and divide to form a critter, an embryo. After some good growing and multiplying in a petri dish, the thing is ready to be placed into the uterus of the surrogate mother. That embryo will grow as normal and the mother will give birth as usual. Since things always go wrong, only a fraction of the somatic nuclear transfer embryos will result in a viable embryo. Despite that setback, plenty of non-lab and non-livestock animals have been cloned. Stuff like wolves, deer, and monkeys. Never a bird though. There are many reasons as to why this doesn't work, but the biggest one is the yolk. The nucleus swapping of the mammalian cloning is easy to do with mammal cells. That's because a mammal cell is thin, about one to three human hairs in diameter. They fit perfectly under a microscope slide. The egg cell of birds is much larger, and the data bank nucleus is much smaller. It's a minute little white dot in the middle of the yolk. Placental mammals don't really have much of a yolk at all. That yolk makes placing the egg under a microscope pretty damn difficult. If you managed to do it, it would be impossible to find the nucleus to suck out. It's like searching for a white marble in a pool of milk. Birds are really weird dinosaurs. They have an incredibly efficient way of turning a fertilized embryo into an egg to be laid. That's another one of the big issues. Once the yolk leaves the ovary, the whole thing is on the move, sloshing around the bird's innards. 
In mammals, geneticists can just stick an embryo in a uterus and let it grow. Like one of those sponge animals in the pill that you place in water to watch expand. Birds don't have incubation chambers. If they did, being light enough to fly would be a pain in the cloaca. Basically, every part of a bird's physiology is adapted to make them lighter. For example, they have oviducts. Once the yolk has formed, the whole embryo is shot into the oviduct. This is the assembly line whose purpose is to create the packaging to protect the embryo for the outside world while it develops. That assembly line coats the yolk and embryo in the egg white, and then the shell membrane, and eventually the shell itself. There is no uterus equivalent in birds where one might be able to stick the embryo. Without the ability to freeze bird cells and clone them, there is no last resort to save any endangered bird species. Just because there's no way to easily clone a bird in the same way mammals are cloned doesn't mean there's no hope. There may be another way to do something. This alternate technique doesn't involve cloning a whole bird, but genetically modifying a bird to only produce the offspring you need it to. You can't clone the embryo, but you can clone the testes or gonads. The answer to this alternate technique involves primordial germ cells or PGCs. These are the ones that will become the sperm and egg cells in sexually mature animals. With PGC tech, you don't have to clone the whole damn thing. You can change what offspring a bird produces. The goal here is to create an animal with surrogate reproductive organs that only produces what DNA you put into it. These hybrids are called chimeras. A similar technique is used here, as with the somatic cell transfer. The geneticists take the PGCs out of one embryo and carefully inserts them into another while it is growing. These donor PGCs will migrate to the host embryo's gonads. If nothing bad happens, this should result in a bird that produces eggs or sperm containing the DNA of the donor. So what does this mean practically? Say you have a domestic rooster, you alter it to only produce sperm with the DNA of a greater prairie chicken. That means you have to mate it to a female greater prairie chicken, and the two together will only ever produce more greater prairie chickens. What makes this even better than mammal cloning is that the bird chimera will only ever produce offspring with DNA of the donor, which means it will continue to produce those offspring as many times as it mates. The thing will just keep popping out chicks. A mammal clone is a singular effort. You clone one individual and it results in one individual. So long as researchers are capable of freezing the PGCs, the process can still bring back the DNA of an organism which has long since died. So long as you have a female left, you'll theoretically get more offspring. In comes the big butt. PGC tech is trickier and more finicky than somatic cell transfer cloning. There are far more steps that open up the process to more mistakes. The whole thing is still in development. Some progress has been made, giving hope that someday soon, the tech will be advanced enough to be put into use for conservation. Most of that research has been done with lab-grown domestic chicken breeds with successful transfer of one breed's DNA into the gonads of another. This tech has successfully created Maya ducks, Korean pheasants, and Hubara bustards from chicken males. The next thing, Tom Jensen, reproductive scientist with the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance, has been working on is trying to see if stem cells from dead birds can be used in this technique. Jensen and his colleagues also want to find out how genetically distant the host and donor can be before the process stops working. So far, every cell they've put into the chicken has done what it's supposed to do and migrate into the gonads. This is a good sign for working across multiple species. Revive and Restore The genetics organization that led the effort to clone the black-footed ferret is currently in the process of trying to produce chicken chimeras with the gonads of the greater prairie chicken for conservation. This project also has the intention of perfecting the PGC process in birds that are more closely related so they can apply what they learn to other related species that may be more endangered or even extinct like the heath hen. 
There are hopes this tech may go on to help improve the genetic diversity in threatened species like California condors or whooping cranes, which are currently mostly descended from just a few individuals. So that means the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park could never have been cloned to begin with. On top of the sheer impossibility of getting good DNA from fossilized mosquitoes in amber, you'd be unable to use the usual cloning techniques. To do the PGC technique, you'd need an adult female, non-avian dinosaur to have your chicken with surrogate gonads mate with. Genetically reverse engineering dino birds is the only option, it seems. So that, in a nutshell, or should I say eggshell, are the reasons why birds have yet to be cloned and can never be cloned.